Hey, what's going on, everybody? Justin here at Trumple Reads, and in this video, we're going to be doing a philosophy book review. Um, I've been trying to add a little bit more philosophy to my, like, reading, I guess, maybe, like, one book a month. I've just been, I've been pretty much failing at that. I think there's only, like, my third or fourth book over the, like, the whole year, but every now and then I try to add one, uh, just because I'm, I used to study philosophy in college and stuff, but kind of, like, let it go for some years, and then now I'm trying to, like, you know, relearn all this stuff. Uh, but anyways, in this book, we're going to be doing a review of Aristotle's Children, How Christians, Muslims, and Jews Rediscovered Ancient Wisdom and Illuminated the Middle Ages by Richard uh, Rubenstein. And uh, purportedly, this book should be about how all three of these um, basically faiths used Aristotle during the Middle Ages. Um, but we're going to definitely get to that in uh, a minute. Let's start off with the my favorite thing about the book, and it's really because it's right at the beginning it's not quite right well it's the first full chapter and it's basically just a biography of aristotle and it was absolutely stunning just uh, the way he was able to describe aristotle's life uh basically using all kinds of evidence and basically i think it was the best picture of aristotle that i've ever read uh, just as like a full um, account of uh what we know about his life and his writings uh things like that thought that was just that was spot on. It was just really good, and it gave me high hopes for the rest of the book. Um, then we move on from there, and we actually have some interesting stuff going on. Like, for example, in the early Middle Ages in uh, Spain, which was sort of the uh, melting pot of cultures, um, we had, like, uh, obviously, like, the Moors in Spain, um, the Christians, and then the Jews were fairly welcome in Spain. Um, compared to uh, well, a lot of other places in medieval Europe. But at some of the universities, such as that, or at the, um, oh, I don't know if it's the monastery or... I might have been. I think it was the university in Toledo in Spain. Um, how basically uh, people from all three of these faiths uh, work together on translating lots of the sort of the um, extant like Greek uh, corpus, mostly um, that included a lot of Aristotle. Um, so it was interesting to see how they were all working together doing translations into lots of other languages, commentaries into like lots of other languages, things like that. That was just really cool. However, the farther along into the book we get. Um, it starts to focus more and more and more on basically just sort of um, Western European medieval philosophy, um, philosophical, like religious thinking, basically. And obviously that's going to be super heavily dominated by Christianity. Um, there's just no getting around that. And that was kind of a disappointment for me because I want to learn more about sort of um, uh, the two other uh, the uh, Islamic and uh, Jewish uh, ways of interpreting Aristotle, because obviously they did. However, it was kind of, like I said, I felt a little gypped in this book because it wasn't covered that much. Um, there was definitely segments in um, pretty much each chapter, but they would be very short blurbs. Um, but for example, I wanted to learn a lot more about like Averroes and um, Avicenna and Mamon, or excuse me, Mamon, Mamonides, Mamonides, Mamon, Mamonides. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's Mamonides or Mamonides, but I think it's Mamonides. But anyways, after the you know, that, uh, like I said, I want to learn more about, like, for example, those figures, which are um, um, some Islamic and Jewish uh, philosophical thinkers, but they're sort of just sort of briefly mentioned. And that was kind of a disappointment because, for example, uh, like in the middle of the book, uh, Peter about Peter Abelard has like, you know, almost basically a whole chapter to himself. Um, I mean, though, that was interesting. And I actually didn't know too much about uh, Peter Abelard. If you guys didn't know, he has a bunch of letters. There's a... Uh, um, uh, the letters between Peter and um, Heloise. Oh, do I have that right there? Why didn't I grab it before I... Dun, 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 right there. The letters of Abelard and Heloise right there. Um, but they were two... At their, uh, they were obviously contemporaries that wrote to each other, and they were kind of like lovers, which was kind of like a... kind of an awkward thing, considering he's sort of like, you know, uh, part of the like lay clergy, I believe, and she's like a nun, so it was kind of, you know, fr <laughs> frowned upon, I guess. Um, but anyways, uh, like I said, I wanted more of a lot of the other thinkers that weren't just sort of the, uh, just sort of the regular uh, medieval Europeans. I, like, for example, Thomas Aquinas has a bunch of uh, stuff in here as well. Um, I will say I did learn a lot, but I think a lot of it was just sort of I don't, I probably should have expected going into the book that a lot of it was going to be sort of a little bit of like a very tower minutiae that was just kind of boring to read about. Um, basically like the universities like fighting each other, 
or not maybe not the universities by each other, but more of sort of the clergy and all the infighting um, about like little like doctrinal matters and whether, you know, it, it just felt almost like Aristotle's court, like uh, philosophy kind of got lost in like halfway through the book. It started just becoming, like I said, just sort of a medieval religious philosophy and it was just kind of like a little bit in the background but um it was definitely didn't feel like it was the focus um of the book which was kind of a, a disappointment because i kind of just wanted to see how aristotle's thinking um or people's way of thinking about aristotle changed over time and from culture to culture that's kind of what i was hoping for in this book and it really wasn't it was more like i said it was more just sort of a general religious philosophy of medieval Europe, I guess. Uh, there, were, I mean, like I said, there was some Islamic and Jewish thinking in there. Just there wasn't any like real dedicated focus on those topics, which, like I said, was kind of a disappointment. Uh, but overall, I did learn uh, quite a bit. There, were, like, uh, there was some interesting stuff on, like, for example, um, universities and how uh, students organize themselves to basically force their professors or the city basically to allow them to learn more or on different things and stuff like that. I thought that was kind of a really interesting uh, tidbit. It was kind of refreshing to learn about, you know, university students basically trying to demand more from their institutions uh, <laughs> um, in the way of actual, like, education and stuff. So that, that was kind of cool. But um, overall, I think um, I was going to give it three stars. I think I will bump it up to three and a half just because I did learn a lot. Um, how much I'm going to retain, I don't really know. But um, I, like I said, I do wish there was more on, like I said, uh, you know, Avicenna, Averroes, and Maimonides, um, figures like those. Uh, just because I don't know too much about them. Um, if you guys have any um, uh, suggestions for books on basically Islamic or Jewish uh, philosophy of the Middle Ages, uh, definitely uh, leave um, a comment down below. I'd be really interested in checking it out. Uh, but like I said, overall, I'm going to give Aristotle's children, um, I am going to give it three and a half, just because the really good introduction to Aristotle at the beginning of the book was just really tremendous. I thought that was, like I said, the best introduction to Aristotle. I just wish Aristotle had kind of stayed as a major focus of the book um, as we got along, but... Like I said, um, there were some problems. I did learn a little bit. Um, I just felt like the subtitles a little misleading, but eh, I guess three and a half stars, Aristotle's Children. Um, like I said, if you guys have any good medieval, philoso medieval philosophy recommendations, leave some uh, le uh, comments down below so I can go check them out. And whatever you guys end up reading, always remember, read victoriously.